Japanese Budo martial arts are not practical and therefore worthless. However, I feel this is an opinion that does not fully understand the true meaning of Gendai Budo. This is the point that I wanted to emphasize the most throughout this video. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. Today, Japanese Budo martial arts are trained all over the world. You too might be currently training in or have trained in karate, kendo, and judo and such. The Japanese martial arts that have become the mainstream today are called Gendai Budo, modern Budo. And the formal arts are called Kobujutsu, which are various methods of using weapons and fighting techniques that were trained by samurai. However, even though Kobujutsu and Gendai Budo have the same roots, if you unravel their history, you will find out that they differ greatly in content and purpose. So today, as a Japanese Budo trainee living in Kyoto, I will explain about the history of Kobujutsu in Japan and the nine main kinds of skills. I will also talk about how Gendai Budo was born from Kobujutsu and the nine martial arts included, as well as their differences. At the end of the video, there's a really important message I want to share with you through today's topic. So I hope you can enjoy this video till the end. For those of you who are currently practicing Gendai Budo, I believe learning about Kobujutsu will help you to deepen your understandings towards Japanese martial arts in general. If you are training in either Kobujutsu or Gendai Budo, please let me know in the comments what you train and why. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. Then first, let's talk about the history of Kobujutsu by breaking it down into three points. One, the birth of Kobujutsu. Two, the development during the war eras. Three, the inheritance during the peaceful era. One, the birth of Kobujutsu. The origins of Kobujutsu are not entirely clear. In the Japanese myths, Kojuki and Nihonshoki, there are descriptions of swords, spears, and bows, indicating that weapons that came from China and Korea were used from ancient times. Also, in a dictionary compiled in the middle of the Heian period, the word sumahi is included, which refers to the contest of strength and is also the root of sumo. It is generally believed that the outline of Kobujutsu was established in this way around the latter half of the Heian period. But why this timing in history? This is because this was the era in which the samurai were born. At that time, the samurai still played the role of bodyguards of nobles, and their main fighting style was one-on-one -on -one horse fights with bows. Therefore, samurai were said to have trained hard in archery while on horseback in order to achieve a higher status. During the following Kamakura period, when the first shogunate, the samurai administration, was established, a training method for samurai called Kisha Mitsumono was born. They are three types of horseback archery. Yabusame, in which you ride on horseback and shoot several arrows one after another. Inuomono, in which you train to keep the target to your left. And Kasagake, where you shoot towards a hat at a far distance. Today, these horseback archery skills are performed as a part of Shinto rituals at special events. But at the time, they were an indispensable martial art used on the battlefield. 2. The development during the war eras. After the Kamakura shogunate and its successor, the Muromachi shogunate, lost their power, Japan entered a period of warfare that lasted for 150 years to determine the next leader. After experiencing the Mongolian invasion in the 13th century, the samurai learned that they could not confront foreign threats with the traditional one-on-one -on -one fighting style. As a result, 
domestic wars changed into battles between large groups of people. And the type of martial arts required also changed in accordance with the change of fighting style. In addition to archery, many martial arts were practiced by samurai in order to be able to respond to any situation. They would first fight with long-range weapons like bows, guns, and spears, and then use swords in a close combat. And finally, if you lose all your weapons, you will fight with jujutsu skills. 3. The Inheritance During the Peaceful Era The long years of warfare finally came to an end with the beginning of the peaceful Edo period started by Tokugawa Ies. The clever politics of the Edo shogunate completely controlled the people until the 15th Tokugawa shogun and managed to prevent any major conflicts from occurring for more than two centuries. However, even after entering an era without war, martial arts training continued to be an essential part of a samurai's life to train their body and soul. It was during this period when the system of Duha was established, which we commonly have today. Until the previous Sengoku era, there were still no established styles in Kobujutsu because in the times of warfare, having one's skills stolen by others could lead to your own death. It was finally in the peaceful era that the system of the masters teaching their skills to their students in martial arts like today was established. During the 250 years of the Edo period, it is said that more than 1,400 styles of kobujutsu were developed, some of which still exist today. The following nine martial arts are currently known as kobujutsu and are members of the Japan Kobudo Association that exists today. 1. Jujutsu 2. Kenjutsu 3. Yaijutsu Battojutsu 4. Sojutsu 5. Jojutsu 6. Naginatajutsu 7. Karate Ryukyu Kobujutsu 8. Taijutsu 9. Hojutsu Others may include archery and horsemanship. However, after the major restoration and the westernization of Japan in the late 19th century, many of the kobujutsu lost their significance and disappeared through the extinction of the samurai class, the introduction of the conscription system, and the adoption of western-style armies. So, if kobujutsu lost their value in the new era, why were they able to survive the great changes of westernization without disappearing completely? It has to do with Japan's final civil war, Seinan Senso, and Bushido, written by Nitobe Inazo. 1. The Seinan War and Batotai The major restoration when Japan westernized was actually another turbulent time in Japanese history. Japan was torn to two sides. Whether it should change according to the growing strength of Western civilization or follow the Japanese traditional culture. Even after the new westernized Meiji government, which had defeated the old Tokugawa shogunate, took over politics, there was another war over how to run this new government. This was the Seina War fought between Saigo Takamori, known as the real last samurai, and the Meiji government. For more information on Saigo Takamori and the Seinan War, please check out our previous videos. The unit that played a major role in this war against Saigo Takamori was the Batotai, a unit that fought with Japanese swords and belonged to the Metropolitan Police Department of the Meiji government. They were originally just a support backup organization, but their success led to the reevaluation of the value of Kenjutsu and Jujutsu, and these skills were introduced into the training of police officers. 2. Boom of Bushido Ideology I'm sure you've heard of the term Bushido before. In fact, the reason why this word became popular is because of a book titled Bushido, the Soul of Japan, written by a famous scholar called Nitobe Inazo in 1899. At the time, Japan was struggling to keep up with Western powers and was also eager to prove its own worth to the world. 
Therefore, scholars like Itobe Inazo wrote books in English that emphasized the beauty of Japanese culture. These books became very popular in Japan too. Even after Japan westernized, it did not completely deny its own unique culture. When the people of Japan realized the importance of their own culture through books like Bushido, they created the Gendai Budo to preserve the traditional ancient martial arts to future generations. So Gendai Budo today are defined as the following. It is an athletic culture of mind, technique, and body based on a systemized training of martial arts derived from the tradition of Bushido. It is a way of human development that trains the mind, technique, and body as one, refines the personality, raises morality, and cultivates an attitude of respect for propriety. Currently, there are nine kinds of Gendai Budo as follows. 1. Judo 2. Kendo 3. Kyudo 4. Sumo 5. Karate Do 6. Aikido 7. Shorinji Kenpo 8. Naginata 9. Jukendo Now that you've understood the history of both Kobujutsu and Gendai Budo, let's talk about the one big difference between the two. It is the purpose of training. Kobujutsu were techniques used by the samurai in the past to actually kill their enemies on the battlefield for survival. On the other hand, Gendai Budo focuses on new techniques created to carry on the spirituality of samurai. As you can understand from their names, Jutsu skills and Do path. Kobujutsu is the art of defeating and killing enemies, while Gendai Budo is a way to develop one's mind and body. In the comments of my videos, I often receive opinions saying that Japanese Budo martial arts are not practical and therefore worthless. However, I feel this is an opinion that does not fully understand the true meaning of Gendai Budo. This is the point that I wanted to emphasize the most throughout this video. Gendai Budo is the art of training and passing on the soul and spirit of the samurai to the next generation. This is why it is important to greet and be polite to your instructors and seniors to keep the dojo clean and to take good care of your equipment. If you have values that emphasize actual fighting, please try studying or practicing the Kobujutsu of Japan. Take a look at the description box below for a link to their website. Then lastly, today's conclusion. It is said that Kobujutsu was established in the late Heian period when samurai first started to appear. Until then, one-on-one -on -one battles with horseback archery were the norm. But after the Sengoku period, various martial arts necessary for battles in large groups were developed. Even in the Edo period, when peace was restored, the practice of Kobujutsu was passed down as the basic education for samurai. After the Meiji Restoration, Kobujutsu almost lost its value, but the success of the Batotai in the Civil War and the writing of books such as Bushido led to the revaluation of its existence and the birth of Gendai Budo. The biggest difference between Kobujutsu and Gendai Budo is its purpose. As you can understand from their names, Jutsu, skills, and Do, path. Kobujutsu is the art of defeating and killing enemies, while Gendai Budo is the way to develop one's mind and body. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you to deepen your understanding towards Japanese Budo martial arts, please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And my goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help would mean a lot. And please check out our sub channel and membership through the link inside the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. So I talked about this a little bit in my video where I where I said I hate Yaido. The Yaido is the katana martial art that I train in. Although, you know, in today's video I was talking, I was saying that, you know, Gendai Budo is for 
on training the mind and body and to carry on the spirituality and soul of the samurai, I, I personally feel as a Budo trainee in Japan right now, I really feel that a lot of dojos, a lot of people are forgetting the true purpose of Gendai Budo. So for example, some um, dojos, for example, do not clean their dojo at all or um, do not um, value the leho, the greetings and such, and they just practice to win games and tournaments, for example. I personally feel that, of course, winning is important. It's It would be a really good experience in your life to uh, aim towards a goal and actually achieve it. That's great, you know, especially for kids maybe and such. But at the same time, I really feel that it's important that, especially people in my generation who will eventually be the instructors, you know, in 10 or 20 years, I think it's really important that we need to remember the true, pur true purpose, the history of how Gendai Budo was born, and that we always, um, as we of course train to develop our skills, we need to of course um, follow the important rules of the greetings, of the leho, of taking good care of our equipment, and things like that. As a person training in Budo, I, in the future, even if once I become an instructor, even if after I get the right to actually teach, this is something that I really don't want to forget.